Hi, my name is Mark Hopkins. Welcome to another episode of Unsung. Today we're talking with a few friends of a missing person, the case that we worked a while ago. Uh, and it, it's, I'm, I'm sorry that we even have to have this talk because uh, we shouldn't be talking about this. It is, I believe, the third anniversary of her missing. And mm -hmm. uh, three years is way too long. And I want to thank her for coming on the show. And basically, some background. Um, Anna Mesajewski, I apologize for my pronunciation last name. I'm Manquit. I don't think I'm the only one. Uh, uh, I always just call her Anna. Um, she went missing three years ago. The difference with this case and many cases is that this case doesn't have a true beginning, and it certainly doesn't have an end yet, and we hope that the end soon, but it's got a lot of middle. It's got way too much middle, um, and we just have more questions than answers, and uh, Sharon, Deb, and Ellen, thank you for coming. Um, thank you, Mark. And... Uh, who wants who wants to who wants to start about um about the beginning of this in the beginning sure well i'll just um jump in if i may and just let everyone know that the 29th is march 29th of 2018 is the last um time that anna was heard from. That's when the text message was sent that she wasn't coming to Poland for her dad's 80th birthday party. Now, whether or not that was sent from Alan or Anna, but that was the last note that ever came from Anna. And last night, we all lit candles in honor of that fact, just to send up good vibes that to Anna that we're here for her, you're here for her, Mark, and we're never, ever going to forget about her until she is home one way or another. Okay. So we had a big anniversary on the 20, uh, well, today, 29th, right? 29th, mm -hmm. today. 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 I was I was wondering why I was pushing for doing it tonight so much, and then it hit me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Yep. Uh, uh, the, the dates of the different cases I work get stuck in my head, but it's not like in a tangible way. They just pop up and I remember them. It's the way I remember dates. Um, when you guys, the day that the day that you guys first found out she was quote missing, you remember that day? Sure. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> for me, it was like um, the Tuesday. When she was report missing on Monday and Tuesdays when I found out, um, I believe it was April 11, uh, 2017. It was a Tuesday. I was driving home from work and, and I got a call from another friend of ours, um, uh, mentioned to me that Anna did not make it to work and her work has reported her as missing person and um, I was shocked because I I knew there was something wrong with her because I had communication with her before that but I didn't know to what extent it was because um, you know I saw Anna back in January 2017 for dinner and we had a long conversation there's a lot of information to share with me at a time that um, you know, all the details um, pertain to this conversation, I don't remember quite well, um, but it was a long conversation, and the most important part of the conversation I remember is that she was very unhappy with things between her and her husband and the situation with her child, trying to get a Polish passport and um, having a husband that's not supporting it was very difficult for her to... Um, comprehend. So I know there was some problem in the marriage, but I didn't know that it was a serious problem. 
Well, and it's it's clear that it wasn't apparent to you that they were that serious, or else it would have never gotten to this point. It, it probably uh, not apparent to her that it was that that serious. It could have led to something happening, or her leaving, or whatever transpired, and we don't know what happened, unfortunately, not yet. Unfortunately, right. Anna right. was very um, she was very quiet about her personal life. She didn't want to foresee from the outside world that her life was imperfect from the inside. That's the kind of person she was. She was a perfectionist to be shown, you know, like perfection. She was perfect from the outside looking in. So she was a, that's the kind of person she was. So she would not reveal that she has a problem. And, and if she did have problems, she was going to try to manage to fix it. Okay. Anybody else? Well, uh, uh, my perspective, uh, I know I came in a little bit after Ellen. Um, I think I found out about it on Easter Sunday. Uh, I was on Facebook, and it was posted on Facebook, and I kind of was thinking, is this a joke? I mean, I, what, well, who would write this? And I uh, went over to Anna's house after Easter Sunday and uh, went into the house, you know, knowing what I've heard on uh, Facebook that she's missing. And I just walked in. Everybody was inside. Actually, everybody was outside on the porch. I, I believe a lot of his family members were there. But uh, they had a huge table filled with food and uh, waffles. I remember waffles and just a lot of, like, food on the table. And it looked like they were having a Easter family party and they were all on the porch and uh, so I kind of thought well I guess this isn't true and um, I went out to the porch and I opened the door and I reached my head out and I just said so so it's not true looking at Alan her husband and he, it got kind of quiet and he walked in and kind of shut the door behind me and I said what's going on is it true and uh, he said, yeah, yeah, she's missing. And I was like, she's missing? And we kind of stood there, and I was asked him questions. Where could she be? It was just very odd. And the family wasn't coming in or asking who I was. And, uh, you know, I was telling him that I, you know, not to worry because I have been calling Anna and her phone is ringing, so she's got to have her phone somewhere. And when I told him that, he said, no, her phone's right there. And he pointed to the table. And I was like, what? How, how could her phone be there? I mean, knowing Anna and Ellen, she, you know, too, you can oh, remember yeah. how she was oh, yeah. with the phone. She always had her phone with her. And. It just wasn't something Anna would have ever gone out of the house without. I mean, she always worried about her baby, and um, it just struck me as, what is going on? And I asked him what her license plate number was, because I was going to go to the local hotel and check parking lots. And um, he said, well, uh, I really don't have that right now. And I said, you don't have her license number? And he said, no, but I'll get it to you. I'll get, I'll get it for you. So it was just odd. I just felt right then and there, there was just, it was obvious to me that this is not right. Looking out at his family, looking in, and just the whole picture at that point was not right. And I couldn't wait to get out of there. I was actually, you know, scared because I thought this is too weird. And I got, I left and I called Alan and said, let's meet over at Anna's uh, townhouse that she has. Well, so, just as a uh, point of clarification huh? there, that's Sharon referring to going to Anna's house after she went missing, um, mm -hmm. and they were having they were having a, uh, a get-together uh, that she came in to, and, and the get-together gave the appearance that nothing was wrong because it didn't seem right considering what was going on that made her reevaluate the information she had heard. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, uh, just for it, it, Mark, it, it was a celebration. There was no doubt. 
It wasn't people worried or sitting around making phone calls. It was a Easter Sunday get together with it was nothing you would ever imagine to be a wife missing. Nothing. It it, it definitely was very strange. It's interesting because I would think that somebody like Alan and I don't I I know a lot about him, but I of course don't know him. But I would think that one of the ways that he might look at something like this would be to just hunker down and methodically go about calling every every hospital, every hotel, and just methodically break it down. And it just and I, I'm always careful to tell people don't judge people. Uh, because people mourn, grieve, and deal with things differently, and we don't. There is no definition of what is right, but I think we we can usually agree on what is wrong or what is not right, you know. Mm-hmm. And this this sounds a little south mm-hmm. of right, you know. I can mm-hmm. tell you my 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 encounter because um, I found out on Tuesday, April 11, Anna was reported missing that she was last on April 10, 2017, so I, I got a call on the 11, so I decided to go to the house on Wednesday, April 12. I had um, training that day. I, train, I have training every, I believe, yeah, every day that week. So I went after my training, and um, that was around maybe 4 o'clock, around 4, 4.30. Um, I arrive at the house. This is a head road uh, in Melbourne. And um, when I was walk, driving into the driveway, the state police just got a statement from the husband. So the door, front door was wide open. And while, while I pulled into the driveway, I saw Alan, Alan coming out. He was on the phone. So it's just him and I, and he looked angry instead of a husband that was worried about the wife. He looked kind of angry, um, and he was on the phone with um, Anna's brother-in-law, Leszek from Poland, and um, he was on the phone with him for some time, waiting for him to finish the conversation. Um, so I went into the kitchen, and I saw Anna's phone laying on the counter. And I knew from that point on there was something wrong, but I was in denial because I know Anna would never, ever leave her phone on, you know, leave her phone behind, but was sitting on the counter. So um, when he finished the conversation, I said, oh, uh, is everything okay? He said, no. Um, He said that he had trouble understanding, talking to Anna's parents, obviously, and he was on the phone with... um, Let's check uh, who's on a strong law and trying to figure out. Um, I don't know what they really talk about, but it's probably like Anna's mom was on her way to come here. So um, she was arriving, I believe, that evening on the 12th. So he told me that. And I said, is she going to stay at the house? He's like, no. Um, no, I'm sorry. They were arriving on Thursday. Thursday or Wednesday, I forgot the dates now, but they were arriving between the 12th or the 13th. But Anna's mom was, is not supposed to stay in the house because his parents are also coming in. So there was not enough room for for the parents to sleep in a big house. It's like 5,000 square feet. Um, so yeah, so I was just thinking that house is huge. The house was very, mm-hmm. very big. I mean, um, even if you just need, you just need an air mattress. Seriously, it's so big. Um, so I saw Anna's phone on the counter. I said to him, "Why would the be? Why would Anna leave her phone on the counter? You know, that's so odd because I have never seen her with her phone." He's like, "Well, is he updating some kind of iOS software? So she was in the rush, so she left it behind, which is also kind of weird because Anna would never leave it that way." But anyway, so, um, so yeah, it was Wednesday the 12th, the parents arrived. The, the mom arrived with the, the, the nephew, um, Michal from California. So they stayed at the residence in Malvern. 
and then Alan's parents stayed with him at Hash Road. So the following day on Thursday, let me see, the Thursday, yeah, Thursday I, I stopped by the house after my training. I went to Wackman's, I bought them a bunch of groceries, and I met with the parents, and um, we talked briefly, put the grocery away, and I left. The strangest thing is that when I put the grocery away and I left, I left the house, I had a strange feeling because while I was leaving, he was watching every step I was making. And um, when I walked out the, the door, get into my car, he was standing to make sure I was leaving the driveway, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I had a really weird feeling. <laughs> so that was, that he was watching every single step I was making. So my next visit to the house was Saturday, Saturday, April 15th, and I stopped by the house, and I met with, um, at that time, the parents were still there, his parents were still there, and um, his niece, who used to live in New Jersey, and her husband was, was we're also there, and we're talking, and I'm like, can we just find a way that we can actually, um, we can actually uh, look for, oh, I forgot to mention this. So on Wednesday, the 12th, when I stopped by the house, I said to him, why don't we look for Anna? If, if Anna ran away from the house with her phone, she would have taken the train either leave her car at Paoli train station, Malvern, or Exton. That's, those are the train stations she would normally use. We would leave her car there, and we can stop by and take a look and see if she's there. If not, maybe we can go to the local hotel. Maybe she needs a, a break away from the house, from the family. Let's look for her car. And he said that, that he doesn't have the time. He has to take his son to swim classes at night, which is not an odd thing. <laughs> why do mm-hmm. you need to take son to swim classes when your wife is not home and report missing? And I'm like, this kind of, I said, don't you want to look for your wife? <laughs> he's, like, right. well, he's like, well, I want to keep as normal for, for, for the son, keep his schedule um as as normal as possible, which is not an odd thing. So I thought it was very strange. Um, well, let's go back to the phone. You both said when you went in the house, you saw the phone there, her phone there. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Where was the phone at? On the counter. They have a and huge counter on in the kitchen, and the phone was just sitting there, like I think on, on the edge of the counter. Let me ask you a simple question. Was the phone plugged in? Um, I think it was. I don't, I don't remember. Reason. But you know one thing? He scrolled through the phone and he saw all my missed call because when I found out that she was reported missing on April 11, I immediately texted her. I called her. I left her messages. I could see all my missed calls through her phone. Could see right through her phone. Was it was it Anna's practice to come home and and leave the phone there on the counter charging? Is that where I she would normally put it? Don't I don't know. No, I wouldn't know that either. Okay, I'm just I'm just wondering if um if he plugged it back in or if it stayed charging or the whole thing about the phone is odd. It's always been odd to me because. When people leave it out of their phones, it's because they're despondent and going to do something themselves. Even then, it's rare. And we'll get people Mm -hmm. that will – the new thing to do is to leave your last statement on the phone. Or the other thing that they do is they will leave their – they will take the phone with them and put it in a uh, Ziploc bag and leave it along their route for somebody to find. Uh, uh, Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just just an odd change of behavior. So – Without without judging, and it's tough to judge without judging, uh, the behaviors of uh, the majority of the family 
the majority, the behavior of everyone, with the exception of her family, was not something that anybody would consider typical or normal or anywhere within the spectrum of normal. Uh, for the yeah, you might be right because I met his family and his parents were not even concerned looking for Anna. I met his niece and and um, nephew, niece and her husband. And I and I remember sitting down talking to them instead of talking away to find out how can we um, you know send a message out to the giant probably looking for Anna. You know um, they were talking about food, what kind of food they will have during Easter, which is not an odd thing. Yeah. And, the, and the fact that they never looked, they've never taken the time at all to look or to ask questions to friends or I mean it's not normal behavior by any means I mean I I think that that tells a lot about what's going on if you ask me people do not just do nothing when someone is missing they don't if they love them and if he's the husband he's going to search for his wife it's human normal behavior um, it, to me, the behavior is he didn't want to search for his wife. He 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 there he didn't love his wife because it's just not normal to not want to find your wife and um, you know the one that you love and the one that you spent your life with. So you know, there's so many unanswered questions. I have yeah. the, uh, because I start creating a Facebook page and people are requesting, we're asking me what is the license plate number. So I start requesting that on Friday, um, it might be even Thursday, 13, uh, and I keep asking him, you know, can you give me the driver license plate number for Anna's car or what color the car whatsoever, and he, and I never got it. He, it skipped it's like it wasn't urgent. Nothing was urgent for him to give me any information mm -hmm. like that. Even the um, missing person report that goes in the missing person database, when I filled that out, I needed information about what Anna warned that day. I'm like, can you tell me what Anna warned that day? You know, I asked him that question, and he couldn't answer me. I said, Anna is very predictable, I said to him. She's very predictable. When you see her Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at work, the next thing you see her, you cannot predict what she could possibly wear or what kind of shoes she will wear. It's very predictable. So um, we walked through her um, um, foyer where they put the shoes in the shoe rack. And like, which shoe is missing here? She she always wear the same kind of shoe or carry the same handbag or wear the same jacket. You know, it's not possible not to remember what she wore when she she ran away on on uh, when you last saw her on April 10th. So all the information, he couldn't give me any of that information. So when I fill out the, the, the missing person report, um, I could only fill out what I know about Anna. Um, I fill in her, her weight, and I said her weight must be 150 pounds. Um, he corrected me for the weight. He's like, no, I, don't, I, I think she's 160. Uh, her height. Oh, her wait, 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 wait. Who, who ups their wives' weight under any circumstance. That's a flappable offense. You don't up mm -hmm. the number. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's mm -hmm. what, what set me so true. about this case was that the initial pictures used to were, they were all negative pictures that I felt were trying to portray the person as despondent because I saw positive pictures and you want to cast the person in the most realistic light and you want to mix. You don't just want the pictures of the person oh, looking to spot unless that's you're that's selling that's an agenda. You know? The pictures that I have mm -hmm. on the page, the first couple pictures were actually, because I don't have any recent pictures of Anna. I mean, so I also asked him for recent pictures. So uh, I got that on when I was at the house on the 15th. I, keep, I said, grab the phone right now. I'm not leaving until I have the license plate number and to have most recent pictures of Anna. And he went through the phone, and there's so many pictures he has of her. Yeah, I think he has two phones. He has a work phone and his personal phone. And he has pictures going through both at the same time, looking for pictures. And he picked the one that looked the most depressing. 
And I said, well, Anna comes back and she saw I have picked the most depressing picture. She'll be like, what the hell am I doing here? Why did you put the most <laughs> depressing picture on the Facebook page? But that's what I've gotten from the husband. He gave me those pictures. And later on, we, we found out a picture from her, but they were not the most recent pictures. So okay, those so from he had photos of her on both phones. Yes. Can you airdrop the phone, those pictures to me? Yep. Okay. The uh, have you guys had any contact with him since this? Uh, in the past, since the last time you spoke with him. Um, the last time I spoke with him is um, uh, the week, the Friday of when her his her car was found outside um, um, was Ash was a tr I forgot the street name now in the Charleston Meadows. Ash so Tree, I think it was yeah. Ash Tree Lane. So when her car was found, I gave him a call, and he was actually on his way home from the Polish school. And I said to him, have you heard the news? I believe Anna's car was found, has been found. And he sounded angry, and I and um, I just I just knew that I couldn't talk to him anymore. So that's, that's how I handled it. So your last conversation with him was Easter three years ago, roughly? Yeah, it's um, it May 2017, correct. Oh, wow, wow, okay. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Any, any of us, he's never called us back. We asked uh, if he could help out, and I think Ellen asked him for if he could give us some money so we could get, you know, some boots on the ground and get some some things rolling, and uh, he said he'd call her back, and he never did. I think no. we asked him another time for a piece of her clothing or something we wanted to use for a psychic, and he said, no, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. idea. Well, but you know, just... I have seen him, he has never shed a tear. Yeah, but you can't, you, I understand what you're saying, but you can't judge by that. I've had cases where people, I thought they were wrong and they were guilty of something and they just didn't emote in the right way. It's not any one thing or any two things, it's three things or five things when you put them together that say it's mm -hmm. not right. Because mm -hmm. some people don't cry. Some people don't publicly show emotion, you know, that I, would, I wouldn't hold them accountable for that. I wouldn't hold them accountable for being distant. I wouldn't hold them accountable for not calling back about giving money. But when you put everything together and the whole act of doing nothing is what always kind of seemed odd to me. Uh, it's not, you know, it's like anything. Uh, we have to participate in our own world and we have to do something. You can't just sit and wait for people to do it for you. Normally what happens is the family gets together and they rally and they become supremely aggressive about finding the person. And there was none of this in that, uh, on that side right. of the family. Mm -hmm. um, Deb, you haven't said much. We're almost out of time. Say something. <laughs> well, I'm just too listening and remembering and oh my gosh heartbreaking but you know that the the thing that sticks out to me the most is when we had the vigil for Anna I think that was the end of May was it the end of May or beginning of June at that park in Chesterbrook mm -hmm. and I remember Alan then coming in uh, with Andrew in the back in his in his um, baby seat, dropping off his mom, and then speeding away. And then I remember having a conversation with his mom a little bit, and all she could talk about was cornbread. And then when we each gave a little um, uh, speech or thought about how – we miss Anna and how we hope she comes home soon and everybody rally and, and then her mom got up and the first thing that I remember her saying was, Anna, she was so sweet, but the word was jumped out so big. I'm like, why mm -hmm. is she saying was? That's just weird. <laughs> And then yeah. it was just so, so surreal and just so um, 
I don't know, not right. And it just felt wrong. And then at the end of the event, then Alan pulls up and gathers his mom and speeds off again, not talking to anyone. I can understand if you're a grief stricken husband that you may not want to speak to anyone, but the look on his face just seemed so like it was more inconvenient than anything. Mm -hmm. It's just so odd. It was odd, Deb. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, that just put the stake in the ground. Like, well, this is something totally not right. Aunt Anna wouldn't just walk away. And I didn't know Anna like Ellen and Sharon did. I just knew Anna in passing at Voya. But I know that she was always dotting her I's and crossing her T's and wouldn't let leave anything undone. Um, well, we're up to the end of the time that I have for the for the base part of the show, but I'm just going to uh, – mm-hmm. we're talking about Anna, who went missing in Malvern three years ago. Yeah. We're, we're not sure the exact date, but uh, around the 29th, roughly, of March. Yeah. Um, there's a Facebook page, and we'll have information for that, and there's a website and um, email address and everything. If anybody has any information, contact contact the Pennsylvania State Police or PA Crime Stoppers, or you could just email. Uh, we'll, we'll have it in a link. Uh, I'm going to pause right now, and we'll do a little bit of after show because we're not done talking. This is Mark Hopkins, and we are back with uh, friends of Anna Mesodreski, who went missing three years ago, roughly, uh, the 29th of March in 2017. She has yet to be found, and we've been discussing the circumstances that um, immediately following her going missing and how this was such a change of behavior for her and how this didn't fit uh, her norm or her lifestyle. Um, Her friends from uh, work, uh, personal, um, and otherwise, Anna wasn't uh, a very open person or, or extremely close uh, person. She's a private person, and it was just that makes it sometimes difficult in these cases. And her friends got drawn in from different areas, but all with the same uh, goal of um, getting cl- closure and finding out what happened to their friend. And uh, this is a real lesson for people because none of them expected to be involved in this. None of them expected it to take up three years of their lives uh, and to just be this lingering, this lingering unknown thing. Um, and, you know, we were talking about some of the circumstances and, and the oddity and the behavior of the family on her spouse's side. And some of that I've seen before, some of that I haven't seen before. Um, people do react differently. Uh, you know, I remember a case where specifically the guy was packing up his uh, his children to go away to college, and he wouldn't help at all with the missing person thing, looking for his wife who was missing. And um, I thought he had done something wrong, and and he said she's not missing. I said she's going to turn up, and whoever wakes her up, it's going to get punched in the face. And he was right, uh, because that's exactly what happened. It's guilty. He looked. He knew his wife, so um, I, ever since then, I don't judge people the same, but there's just too much that's not normal in this. Um, what are some of the things that you guys would like to see happen with this, if possible, in a perfect world? What would you like to see happen in investigatively or, or, or just community-wise? Or what, what do you think would help push this along? Sharon, you go. Um, I don't know. My, my thoughts on that is, um, well, it was a wake-up call for me because uh, I just, you know, living in Malvern and there's no crime, you don't think about it, you know, you hear about it on the news, but, you know, could this really happen here? I mean, um, the scary part for me is that as a woman, um, yeah, we should be scared. I mean, a woman can go missing. If you got a little bit of money, you can lawyer up and 
get a good lawyer and you don't need to talk. I mean, I'm just so shocked that this can really happen, that this man can get a lawyer and not have to talk and not. And that's it. I mean, you can't get any more information out of him. You can't bring him back to the station. You, you know, you can't do anything. So for Anna's sake and for every woman out there, we should be worried that that there should be changes in laws, if you ask me. I think all doors need to be open when a missing spouse goes missing. And and save some tax-paying money by letting the uh, police come in and do a thorough search and do uh, an investigation. Because, you, uh, you know, we know the, the first person, the closest person has got to be the person that's got to be brought to the station i mean it's usually the person that knows them the closest person has to be investigated he wasn't he got off from that poor anna uh doesn't have justice today and we need to change some laws this man needs to be brought to the station again and needs to go through this again this is needs you know something needs to be done that's you know just how i feel well, and I, I think that one of the things that happens is that very often that when these things happen, that the uh, it's tough to say what's the right and what's the wrong reaction. The best right reaction I've ever seen from somebody was a guy who said, you do whatever you have to do. Let's do it now. Let's get it over with. I need to be removed from the list of suspects so you can focus on solving this. You know, exactly. I'll do whatever you need. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think right. that's kind of a normal response or a pragmatic response. I, I think people would want to lock down if they were, you know, sometimes people lock down for the wrong reasons. I've seen people lock down because they didn't want to get in trouble for parking tickets. And it's like, this is beyond parking tickets. Uh, we got to focus. But I think uh, there needs to be some kind of mandate that uh, you can get, you can get DNA and you can get phone records right away from uh, from the significant others around the person, yeah. you know, so that you can, you, you don't lose that time, um, you know, while you're going back and forth with them. And I don't think that, uh, I think they should, I think they should have to give a statement. I think it should be, you know, it should be there. It shouldn't be, you're invited to give a statement. I'm, I, I'm, I'm from the, I'm from the city and I didn't know you could, I didn't know you could decline such things, you know, yeah. in this type of thing. I, I didn't even know that. Um, and I, I think it's just, I understand if you're under suspicion, but if you're under suspicion, you can either hide and expand the suspicion or you can remove the suspicion by, by being a little bit more open. And I think that's usually the way to go to help close it. Not only, even if you were, if it was an ex and you were fighting with them or something and it was bad terms, even if you selfishly do it to have yourself taken off the radar, it, it's, it's something. But I think that this whole thing where you just hide and hunker down, that doesn't help the case at all. And it doesn't because um, at some point um, their child's going to be old enough to ask adult questions about this. And the questions mm-hmm. won't have the right answers. There aren't good answers to these questions, unfortunately. Um, they, they, they don't paint a good picture. The um, and, and what you said about living there also is um, there's also – I didn't realize that – a uh, big chunk of that area doesn't have its own police department, um, yeah. and, and 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 it was it was the case was managed um, through the state police, which was managed by a barracks that was in Lancaster, which was some distance away. And I think that that gap uh, can hurt a case of the severity. You know, um, I, I think that you know we 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 get comfortable and we don't have police departments in some of the, the quasi rural areas, but I, I certainly thought that was, had a local police department there, and I was shocked to find out it didn't when we were working the case. Um, I, I, I don't think that's. It. I think it's always better when you have a local police department because they know the neighborhoods, they know the people to a degree, they know the circumstances, and they can focus on it differently. The state police have the burden of a much larger area to cover, and it's uh, much more spread out. Um, the when you when you did when you did the, um, the the vigil, I guess that was hampered by recent events because you can't get together as a group and do anything. Um, right. Uh, do you do you plan on doing something when um, 
when they take the giant bubble off of the off of the state and we can uh, roam freely again? I think so. No doubt. It. Um, we definitely want to get an or organized vigil together like we did that end of May, beginning of June of 2017, just so we can keep Anna in the forefront. And we are actually planning on one to do the end of March at um, Charlestown, right in Charlestown, not too far from Anna's house. But the kibosh got put on on that because of uh, everything that's going on. But that's probably the place that we'll have it. And um, so we'll definitely keep this in the forefront, keep Anna in the forefront, no doubt. It's it's tough to do because the news site was so fast. And um, I think there's been three reveals on this case on the news where it was really nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, and unfortunately, people move on to the ne to the next case, and it's very difficult to keep things on people's minds. And and what what mm -hmm. should keep this on people's minds is the fact that um, this this woman did nothing wrong. There was there was no other side to her. There was no shadiness. There was nothing to bring this on her. It just happened. This is as innocent as innocent gets. This could be you. It could be someone you love. It could be it could be anybody, and lots of times we find ourselves in the hands of strangers. And you would hope that people would come together to help and make sure that some attention was brought to keep this um, in the forefront of people's minds to bring it to a resolution. The um, this has been an interesting uh, case because it's brought together an interesting group of people to. Um, um, it's brought personalities. Uh, there's been there's been uh, there's been battles. Uh, there's been mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and and I always uh, you know it's it's always confusing when people are fighting to help in something. Uh, I've seen um, people with good intentions uh, get swayed. I've seen people rise to the occasion. There was a recent. Um, there was a podcast about it that 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 went in several directions, but I guess at the end of the day, it generated some talking. Uh, it it's kind of taken on a, a life of its own. I don't know. Like I said in the beginning, it's it's all middle. This case is all middle. There's I don't know I don't know exactly when it started, and I don't know when it'll end. It's 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 all middle, and it makes it more more draining. Um, do, do you? Do you believe that any scenario where Anna went away and started a new life or ran away with a boyfriend or any of that nonsense that's been circulated? Not for a minute. No. Not for a minute. See, if we were a never, video broadcast, I could show – if we were a video broadcast, I could show Ellen's face, and it looks like she's having a stroke. Uh, <laughs> right. quitting so much. Uh, uh, um, yeah. You know, and, and, Mark, you know, the thing, the thing I want to say is, Anna was such an, a special, uh, sweet, kind girl. She doesn't deserve any of that, and it's it's a lot of emotions, you know, dealing with this because. When you know her, you just can't believe the things that came out and things that people were saying about she was depressed or, you know. It, I just want people to know that she was such a lovely person, and um, we aren't ever going to forget her. We're going to try to keep this going until justice is served. Um, right. Right. It's, it's important, and I think it's important to the community, too. I think people should be aware of this and, you know, and read up on it, too, because it's, it's, it's really a sad story. And there's a lot of sad stories, but this really is mm -hmm. um, a sad story, and she did not deserve this. That's for sure. No. And you think about her parents. I mean, they're back in Poland. 
They both have survived not only the Cold War, but now they're surviving cancer right now. They're surviving their heart being torn into shreds, not knowing where her daughter is, and also the disappointment of a son-in-law that can give a crap. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just heart-wrenching for them, and they need answers. So... This is why one of the reasons why it's so important that people know, people continue to hear about it. And, Mark, we're so thankful for all the work that you've done to bring this out into the forefront and all of your um, radio shows and podcasts and everything that keep people in the know. And it's details that they need to know, too. These are not normal details. These are details that just need to be looked into so you people understand the caliber of what's happening it's just heartbreaking well i think that people don't realize that um i believe one of the things that flies by in the in the in the ticker of all the facts is that uh her parents lost another child um that there was something i remember early on being told about there was something involving the politics in the region that they were in and it was a political thing uh, or something with another child that they had that vanished. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure. I have notes written down on it somewhere. But it was a political well, I think thing. It it was, I like think this. it was Anna's mother. Brother. Sure. The mother. Anna's mother's brother. Yeah. Okay. yeah that's what it was. It wasn't a child. Yeah. It was a brother. It's a brother. Uncle. It was uncle. Her uncle. Okay. That's right. Her uncle. But, I mean, it's uh, – these are – um, her parents are, are too, I mean, there's a distinctive language barrier there. When I met them, I, I couldn't communicate. You don't only communicate via words, uh, but mm -hmm. I couldn't communicate via words to them. But they, they are, uh, it, you'd be hard pressed to meet two people that you would think that, um, you were stronger than, uh, but because, um, I, I, what I mean to say is that they were, they had so much strength in what they were doing in their resolve to help bring closure that I was just amazed. I couldn't, I mean, they are both elderly. They are both dealing with different illnesses, uh, some serious, and they are getting on a plane to come to another country to stand in line, to ask a question, to be told to come back tomorrow for an appointment or this or that. Um, right. and, and, right. and They've done this multiple times, and you know, no matter what you think about any aspect of it, they don't deserve to have to go through this. Um, no, they, they don't have to go through this. Um, they they should be able to get. I, I don't want to say it's it's they not don't. speedy justice, but they should be able to get a little bit more than um, they have, and it's a little bit of a failure because when you don't have somebody, what's always concerned me about this case is. When the people that are here, if you are not from here, and your partner that's here isn't championing your cause, you're at the mercy of strangers for all intents and purposes, friends and strangers, and it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't. Um, her parents deserve more. She deserves more. Her son deserves more. And I, I, I think you know, if nothing else, and and I. I don't accuse and I don't know because I've been I've been wrong as much as I've been right, so I keep my mouth shut as much as possible. But I would think that this would be a template to the relatives that she has here uh, to maybe reevaluate that the way that they responded, whether they think it's right or not, isn't by normal societies, whatever that is, I mean, it's a little off-putting, and they should look at it, and maybe, you know, it might be a really good thing if they were to reach out and make a statement about it, and maybe explain it. People are forgiving, people are understanding, but it, you, it, 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 they're making it really hard to understand their point of view. I've tried to defend it every chance I had, but it's very, uh, it's very difficult to just that level of standoffishness uh, because it's not going to right. see the funny thing about these cases is and I'll tell a little a little story uh, that I've had cases that go 
long, and we just had a case that is five years old, and they thought the person ran away and started a new life and never felt that. And what's going to come out is that the person didn't run away. Something happened to them. And I, mm -hmm. uh, because of something that we discovered um, two weeks ago, um, doing, doing a search. That's why I like to do these cold case searches this time of year. And what I what I'd say with that is that if somebody does something to somebody and they think they're going to get away with it, they're sadly mistaken because justice is slow, but it doesn't it doesn't forget. And there will be there will be consequences. And until you have the consequences, you have the burden of not knowing and being worried when that knock is going to come at your door. And if you have the ability to supersede that and stop it and explain your case in cases where the person didn't do something wrong. We get so many cases where it's two people going at it and one person gets hurt and the other person covers it up because they don't want their lifestyle to change. And that's just a horrible show of judgment and uh, some obstruction. That's not... That's not a, the capital crime, you know, of taking a life. But what happens more and more is um, I see that as time goes on, people think that it's over. It's not. These cases are coming back, and it's being found out. It's never over until it's over. And uh, knowing is better than not knowing. And in this case, it's five years. I'm sure that everybody got comfortable and everything and thought it was done and forgot about. It's not forgot about. Uh, the police are working on it. Um, we've been out. Uh, there are things that are being worked on to narrow it down because when somebody does something to cover up a crime, not the actual act of the crime, but to cover up the crime, what they don't realize is that they have, even if they're smart, they have one shot at it. That's their premiere. That's it. They get one shot on stage when they do it. it. The people that are looking for them get to do it every day. And sooner or later, it's going to catch up with them if, if they've done something wrong. And uh, that's happened. that happens more than not. I don't believe that Anna went away to start a new life. It's very rare for mothers to do that. Uh, it's very rare. I don't believe that. Uh, I don't believe that uh, there was any. There was anything where you know where uh, the evidence isn't there about her wanting to do something to herself. It just doesn't. It just doesn't add up. Uh, and, all, and also, go ahead. Also, Mark, people people don't look for something they know where it is. It's just the way it is. They had they they don't go looking if they know where it is. So they had no interest in where she was or doing one thing. To me, you know, her husband had a responsibility as a husband, just like my daughter when she gets married. I would want to hold my daughter's husband accountable. Where is my daughter? And you do everything you possibly can to find my daughter for us. And for her and for for everybody who knows her, there was nothing. Um, so, you know, let it be what it is. Uh, hopefully this will stand up someday in court for him because he's done nothing. And it's, it's maddening to me that this can really be happening. Well, even if you write off the, uh, the response... And you can say that there's uh, we deal with things and we grieve differently. Even if you write all that off, you mm -hmm. can safely say that there was a failure to protect as a spouse uh, yeah. here. There was a there was a failure to uh, react as a spouse. There was a failure to you know uh, follow through with aspects of those marital vows. Sure. Um, you yeah. know and and. That's what I think people are having a problem with, not the minute judgments of who argued about this or that or, or who did what. It's but it's just that there's no evidence of mm -hmm. wanting to do anything. I mean, the public got so involved in this, and and I can see a point in there. I can see a point in there where somebody of his nature would be pushed back in the hiding 
perhaps somewhere after the beginning because the public got so visceral. But I think it was the inaction of the family that made the public rise up so much. Um, it was inaction was what created the public response, you know. Uh, yeah. If, if people felt it was being dealt with, they they wouldn't have responded the same way. But um, I, I think it was the inaction that ultimately got it. Right. The uh, um, the um, what good do you think any good has come out of this? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think the good that I see is that this is a red flag that the system needs to be changed. And I think the other good is that we saw so many people come together and help Anna. A lot of them didn't even have never met her, didn't know her at all. Right. And that was just a real dose of, wow, there's some humanity here and people will step up to the plate and they will fight the fight. And people have done that. And even though, you know, there's some people with different opinions, they have put those opinions aside and have come together for the sake of finding Anna. Well, there's, which there's, is the good that I've seen. And uh, mm-hmm. bad circumstances, I, I say this all the time, but bad circumstances introduce you to good people. Um, and uh, you, always, you always feel bad about meeting them during those circumstances, but there have been a lot of good people that have come out in this, and I, I would hope that um, there's new powers to be in the district attorney's office that maybe a fresh set of eyes uh, takes a look at. There's new powers to be at the state police. Maybe they take a fresh look at it, um, you know, and it's, it's you know, Pride or anything else has no part in this. Uh, it needs it needs to be looked at and turned into a uh, something where it can be closed, uh, a case that can be closed for, for for better or for worse. I mean, I'm I'm not optimistic about the outcome. Uh, I'm not. I don't. I don't. Uh, the nature of my business is not that I'm optimistic. All the data doesn't lead to something where. Anna comes to a door with a Hawaiian shirt over her shoulder and says she's back. You know, uh, right. that would be nice. Uh, that would be nice. I'd be happy to be wrong. Uh, and then, you know, you guys, you guys probably would slap her senseless under those circumstances <laughs> in, in happiness. But I don't think that'll. I don't think that'll happen. I don't think it's going to be that kind of thing. I think that it's already the ending is already her part is written, and I think it's just finishing it up so that it could be closed and it. The word you used before is justice. Uh, justice, whatever justice is meant to be served, can be served. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Do, do do you ever see um, um, as you're as you're going about your 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 weeks? Do people still bring this up to you? Because there was a point in time when it was so it was all over the place. You couldn't miss it anywhere, and then it kind of faded away and now, you know, you're, you're, you're taking advantage of the anniversary, which is exactly the thing to do. Um, the, um, you know, you're taking advantage of the anniversary and, um, working, you know, working to get some attention to it. Do you have any other plans to try and get attention while things are, uh, going on, um, around this time of year? That's a great question. I think that um, we we rally over the phone many, many times uh, a month. And um, we were just planning the event for March. But, um, no, I think we are going to continue to rally and plan and get something in the forefront soon, whether it's just social media or – you know, live and in person when all the virus is said and done. Yeah, yeah, and that's certainly not helping anything. Um, and, you know, if just anything can help you, we're happy to help. I just, I was thinking about this 
you talk about the anniversary, and I was thinking about, you know, it might be something to do, uh, to do a, um, because of the limitations of the current circumstances, you could do a virtual town hall, give out a number, make an account for this, make a passcode and a number, put it out on Facebook, make a date and a time, and get 100 or 250 people online mm -hmm. um, and give a talk where you guys aren't – it's a moderated talk, and you guys could take questions, do question and answer, but um, everybody's not speaking free form. You know, they've got to – Right. Digitally raise your hand to speak, but you can, you know, give a little statement. That might not be a bad idea. That's a great idea. Um, well, if you guys decide you want to do that, I could tell you how to set it up, and it it won't cost anything. And uh, and you and you could you could do that, and it might be a way to get it out to a bunch of different people. And uh, the only thing I would say is, it being the, the anniversary. And with the way people are holed up right now and starved for anything, it's a good time to catch attention. That is a really good point. Yep. But uh, well, I think yeah. that's a great idea. We should definitely jump on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to? Anything else you want to cover? Anything else you want to say? Um, I just want to thank you, Mark, and all the work that you've done for Anna and her family and for. Uh, all of us, her friends, and um, just from your perspective, uh, and I know it's hard for you to predict any kind of chances that there will be closure here soon, but on a scale from 1 to 10, what hope do you think, what hope would you give this case? What hope would you give finding Anna and bringing justice? On a scale from one to ten, I don't know, probably seven or eight. I, I, I well, let, let, let's let's do it this way: uh, eight of finding her, seven of justice. Uh, I don't think they're the same number. I think they're different. Mm -hmm. uh, people that go missing in Pennsylvania don't typically go missing long term in that area. And usually when it's a criminal thing, unless it's a criminal mastermind and if it is a criminal thing, it's usually it's usually not that uh it's usually not that difficult. What usually happens is like a lot of people go missing and they're found in the in the spring because people go back out for the first time or whatever. And what I would say is that if something happened to Anna and her remains are outside somewhere and I were somebody that were involved in that, I'd be really, really nervous because mm -hmm. there's going to be such a concentrated wave of people outside in a couple of weeks and they're going to be everywhere. They're going to be off the beaten path and there's going to be people and there's going to be dogs and there's going to be everybody everywhere. And they're just likely to stumble upon something that somebody thought was better hidden than it was. The animals have had more time out there undisturbed because of us being holed up. All this place against the best laid plans of mice and men. So it'll be wrapped up. It'll be wrapped up whether something happened to her that was outside of her control, something happened to her that was within her control, it will be answered. The only reason I lean towards it being something outside of her control is because, in my experience, mothers don't leave their children, and people mm -hmm. leave notes. Uh, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't, none of those things are present here. So I, I'm confident that it will be wrapped up. I'm disappointed that it isn't wrapped up now. Uh, um, I'm, I'm disappointed that it took so long. Here we are, three years, and I remember, I remember at one point, uh, it was some mix of you guys talking about what if this goes two years, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and here we are, three years, um, and 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 you know, time just flying by, and um, you know, it's good that she, it's good that she has friends to care because you wonder who's going to champion you when you. Uh, 
when you aren't there to champion yourself. And I'm sure if one of you were missing, she would be stepping in and taking the place to help you guys. So it's good that you're doing it for her. Um, uh, if, there's, if there's anything we can do to help, just let us know. Um, and also, I will uh, I'll be happy to get that information to you on how you could do that conference call. I think you could do up to 250 people. So it wow, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, I, I would love to look into that. Yeah, um, yeah. Just let me know, and uh, I guess that's everything. Unless you guys have something else. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks for yeah. all that you do. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mark, for keeping this in the forefront and all your energy and positivity. It's amazing. Well, let's hope there's no fourth anniversary. Yes, yeah. fingers crossed. No year four. No year four. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Yep. It's the mantra. Yeah, that's the theme. No year four. <laughs> No, okay. you're Thank you very much, and uh, Thanks, I will, uh, I'll cut it off, and I'll let you know when, guy, when it's going to be done, but thank you very much, and I'll talk to you soon.